Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode and we're going to be breaking down MES. Now this is a topic we haven't talked about on Eco Ask Why, so I'm very excited to go through this. And I know it's going to have a lot of value for our listeners out there. And to help us understand this concept and, and what MES systems are, we have Miri Dihapate, who is the MES engineer at eTechnologies Group. So Miri, how are you doing today? Hey, Chris. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so excited to talk with you. You actually were a referral from one of our Eco SY alumni, Mr. Uh, Matthew Simmons. So we're excited that he connected us. So I'm um, very excited to talk to you today and maybe just help us to get started. Lay a base for that listeners out there because some of the listeners may not even know what MES stands for. So how would you explain that to someone who's new to the topic? So I've been working as an MES engineer for almost all of my career after I graduated from college. Um, so MES is, it stands for manufacturing execution systems. So some, someone who uh, works on in a, in a shop floor environment would know uh, what an MES is, uh, but I'm pretty sure that a normal person would not know what an MES can do for a shop floor. So um, I'm, I'm really excited about this opportunity to talk about MES because uh, it, it's evolving. And uh, as more and more people start knowing more about it, um, I'm sure it's going to be a, a new technological evolution. Mm -hmm. So um, what MES is, it's, it's basically a middle layer between the enterprise planning and the shop floor. So whatever happens at the control system level at, um, in a plant uh, gets transferred over to ERP uh, using MES as a middle layer. Uh, and all the KPIs uh, for production that help a plant uh, achieve their overall effectiveness uh, is given by uh, MES. So MES solutions are basically uh, something that help achieve the overall equipment uh, efficiency of a plant and uh, help improving the productivity of a plant. Manufacturing execution system also helps in tracking all of the production data. Uh, and in turn, it helps in better efficiency management, quality management, uh, inventory management, uh, and and it also helps in a lot of scheduling. So um, any processes that are predefined in a plan uh, can be carried out using an MES system and uh, the output can be measured in terms of what the performance of the plant was. Mm -hmm. So that gives uh, the users um, a handle over what is exactly happening in the plant and they have all, all of the data to uh, do a further analysis. Okay. Now, when you're talking about manufacturing companies in general, you know, is there, is there a compelling why behind an MES on why to embrace that? Uh, from that from that manufacturing industry specifically? Yeah, so a lot of times uh, there are plants that are still doing a lot of paperwork. So, uh, so operators are doing manual work, um, writing down their results on paper, and all of that is not really accountable for uh, most of the times. Mm -hmm. So there could be any physical situation in which the paperwork could be lost or, or tampered with. Uh, but whenever an MES system comes into place, um, it just gives a lot of accountability for all of the users at the site. So it helps the plan keep the processes flowing uh, just the way they should be and all of the data accountable for. So if anyone is entering any production data into MES, uh, it gets stored in a database that is dedicated to MES. So in future, if you wanted to retrieve that data and if you wanted to see who did what or uh, you know, keep the productivity accountable, uh, then you have that data available versus keeping uh, manual records, which might not be available in say X number of years. Mm -hmm. For sure. Now, so that sounds like to me that evolution has really come a long way. You talked about a lot of basically pen to paper type data tracking over the years where that's evolved now more to actually connecting some of these systems together electronically, but being able to mine the data in a systematic way that makes sense where you can actually understand what, what is, how it is affecting your process. Is that 
kind of the evolution that where MES is going? Yeah. So um, in in back in the day, it used to be all uh, manual paperwork, mm-hmm. and a single person used to do a job of multiple people. So uh, someone who is also maintaining quality records uh, would be doing inventory tracking. So in that way, there was no streamline in the flow of activities that the person was responsible for. Mm -hmm. So when MES came into picture, one of the many advantages of MES is that the person has a a typical workflow assigned to uh, to that person on the shop floor, and they have to follow whatever is there in their work processes. So um, it just, so it's kind of like, imagine having a to-do list for the day and you have to check off everything on your to-do list. So it's, it gives you a better idea uh, about planning how to do it. And also once you're done executing, you feel better that you have completed that task. And then you doing it makes you accountable that, okay, I have completed it and maybe I can show this in, on paper to someone uh, that I have completed it. Whereas in the past, it, it would be all half hazard, like someone is doing QHX and then someone gets called off to do something else. And then those QHX are not accounted for. Right, right. So that traceability re- sounds like it really goes up big time. Yes, yes. And when you talk about evolution of MES in terms of how um, the shop floor uh, has evolved or shop floor operations have evolved, Uh, So MES has come a long way from just being a data entry tool uh, to now being something that is associated with uh, Industry 4.0 when, you know, all of the data that is stored into MES has been moved to cloud-based systems so that um, there is more of a data analysis and then people can also get um, like real time dashboards mm-hmm. where they can monitor their uh, operational processes in real time. Whereas in initially it would have been like, you have to wait for the entire process to complete, mm-hmm. generate all those paper reports and in the end analyze the system. But now it, it is moving on to be more real time. So is that, is it moving on to be more real time because of digital transformation? Now you mentioned industry 4.0, but like digital transformation, smart manufacturing, all these new technologies out there that are pulling data, even down to simple stuff like power meters. You know, we, we have more data available at our fingertips now than we ever have in, in manufacturing. Pulling that into the MES, is that where you're seeing a lot of that, that transformation and that evolution taking place? Yes, uh, so MES has predominantly been a very data-driven system. Mm -hmm. So when I say KPIs, uh, uh, earlier I mentioned KPIs, but I didn't say what it is. So KPIs are key process indicators. So how would you know that your process is uh, optimum? How would you know that your output is optimum? Mm -hmm. Uh, That's that's where the KPIs come into picture, where uh, there are a few indicators that every site has um, and so, for example, process reliability. So that's a parameter that uh, every uh, shop, every plant has, um, and they track what the what the process reliability for each of the batch was. So how each of the batch, what was the output of each of the batch, uh, as compared to what the inputs were. Right. Uh, so that just gives you how much was the waste, uh, how much was the actual production. Mm-hmm. Um, so in terms of that, in terms of uh, analyzing all the KPIs and everything, it's a very data-driven system, MES. Uh, and that's the whole point of, or, or I won't say whole point, but that's that's one of the major uh, chunks of Industry 4.x being data-driven and, and getting that data and analyzing that data for the betterment of the future. Right. So, so where is it going next? I mean, if you look from an MES standpoint, you know, right now we're in 4.0, where do you see the next, you know, big leap from an MES standpoint being? So um, the when I said that it, it has evolved from being just a data entry tool to going on to cloud, mm-hmm. uh, from, from my experience, what I've seen is um, users used to just have a standalone system mm-hmm. uh, where they would used to put data in. Um, and they're done with their work. But now um, they ha- they are moving more towards mobility solutions. So everyone has an iPad um, or some tablet of sorts uh, on which they can continuously monitor operations. They can make sure uh, that failures are avoided. 
which again improves the throughput of the system. So you catch the failures before they happen uh, and avoid them. So initially, if someone was busy with the actual manufacturing operation, the physical part of it, they were never able to see, go back and look at the system of what's happening in MES. But now with MES going all uh, in, the, in the direction of mobility, uh, they have their own systems, they carry it everywhere throughout the shop floor, and they just know what's happening at that time. When I said that they, they have those real-time dashboards, so uh, I think the future of MES is just having everything right there and yeah. getting to make decisions, at, even at individual level. So they don't even have to wait for a supervisor to make some decisions, which could just you know, save a lot of dollars in yeah. the long run. That's, I mean, it's the, the whole evolution. Have you, have you thought about or have you seen anybody with the uh, the glasses yet? You know, you talk, you mentioned the iPad for like augmented reality and things like that. So, I'm, you know, are, is that the type of stuff that you're that you that you envision in the future on the plant floor? Yep, yep, yep. So um, there is this article I read about um, some MES being developed. Not now. They just have a prototype uh, where it would kind of be like Google Glass. Uh, yeah. So they just put on uh, the glasses and they see the entire shop floor uh, getting uh, augmented in front of them. So they know even before the production begins, they, they can envision how the production will move and how the final product will look like even before it is even made. No, that's pretty cool. That that's awesome. Yeah. That that's that's the stuff that, that gets us amped up here, and I know our listeners mm -hmm. too. Yep, yep. That's that's pretty cool. I mean, uh, I would be. I'm intrigued, and I would love to work on a technology like that. Oh, well, it's you. You will, no doubt about it. You're you're one of our heroes. You will for sure. And <laughs> and as speaking about working on a on an MES system, who typically is doing that, Mary? Is that is that MES engineers only, or is it other people? And, and what does that day-to-day -day look like? Um, so the, there's a fun fact uh, about MES. Um, I find it fun. <laughs> so almost 80% of the users at the plant um, use MES if they have an MES system. So okay. anyone walking in and out of the door in a shop floor can touch MES at any point of time during the day. So typically it's not just MES engineers. So when I say that I'm an MES engineer, uh, I am basically helping the plant achieve their MES goals. Um, I'm helping them resolve issues. I'm helping them in implementation of new lines. Uh, I'm helping them in implementation of new technologies when it comes to MES. Uh, but the actual users are the site users. Okay. So it ranges from people like, uh, SSOs. So SSOs are site system owners. Uh, they have a dedicated owner who would look after all of the MES activities at the site. Uh, and that person would typically uh, resolve issues at the site level or just coordinate between different users or just remind people if they need to do some tasks which they have not done yet. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are the base users which are called operators. Uh, so the operators are the ones who would typically enter data into the MES system, looking at what's going on. So for example, um, there was a final product and uh, there were a few parameters on the MES screen asking the user to check off um, to determine the quality of the product. So that could be like, does the product look red in color? Does the product uh, smell like lavender? Uh, just an example. Mm -hmm. So uh, some quality checks like that, that the user performs. So those are, uh, and even those operators are divided into different zones. So quality operators would be different. Uh, scheduling operators would be different. Uh, maintenance is another big part when it comes to running a plant. So maintenance operators could be different. So basically anyone from operators to top level management um, and when I say top level management, that comes into picture when they want to view the real time dashboards mm -hmm. and take some corporate decisions based on whether a quality product is going out in the market or how do you want to improve the quality or how do you want to improve the eff efficiency of the system. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much, um, like I said before, like almost 80% of the site uses MES uh, day to day 
on some level, either at the corporate level or directly at the base level into entering data. For sure. It sounds like it touches so many different people and different or, you know, parts of the organization. Uh, and it almost sounds too, once it's there, it's very sticky. A lot of people get a lot of value out of it. So it's, it's wonderful. And you mentioned earlier that that MES and the ERP, they kind of work together. And I was thinking the IT and OT convergence we hear a lot about. We talked a lot about on our show, just uh, there has to be that, that line of delineation between the two, you know, sometimes how they play together, particularly from a, uh, from a manufacturing standpoint. So how does that work with MES and ERP systems? How, is, there, is there a similar type of, of structure there? Just curious on, on how that tie, what that tie is. Uh, yes, so there definitely is, uh, like I said before, MES is a middle layer between the ERP and the shop floor. So the way um, the ERP and MES is connected um, is, so every MES system, there are different types of MES systems in the market today. So every MES system has its own technology to connect to ERP, uh, but the functional concept behind it is that um, usually, typically uh, a ERP system will have something called as a process orders. So right. process orders are something that uh, tells the operator which product is going to be manufactured, which batch is going to be manufactured at that time, uh, and what is the uh, what does the scheduling for that product look like? So what time will it start? How much should be produced? And uh, everything that's related to that particular run. So these process orders are typically pro, uh, prepared at the ERP level. So that, that's the planning that the ERP does, right? So after the planning, uh, they send down these process orders down to the MES system. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, it could be any technology that any of the uh, different MES platforms use. So once uh, those process orders are received, into MES. Uh, so typically there's a scheduling screen in MES, which would show the operators which process order uh, begins when, and they would just go and activate that process order, which would then send a message down to the PLC that this is the process order that needs to begin. And that's when the PLC or the site level, uh, the operators will start that particular run of the product. Okay. So that's, that's the flow from ERP to the, to the shop floor. Very good. Very good. Now, I've traveled around a lot of manufacturers across the Southeast, been in a bunch of different plants. How would I know if I walk into a manufacturer, what looks different for one that's utilizing an MES system versus one that's not? Um, so definitely um, one thing that would look different is uh, like having paper records. Okay. Or if, even if for someone who is not using paper records, it would be a very primitive approach of either having something like an Excel based tool or uh, a primitive approach to managing data mm -hmm. uh, and then calculative approach of someone, uh, you know, having the calculations in there. And uh, it would be a very primitive approach of having the Excel calculate the final value. But in MES, uh, you would get the data to the last, I mean, to two decimal places also. So if you wanted to know for a particular product, um, what was the batch ID? And for that batch ID, how many um, number of samples were produced and what was the quality output of those samples, you would get that within few seconds generating reports. You, you could get that within few seconds and everything would be up to two decimal points accurate. So, so that's the... Yeah. So if I'm in a plant and I see maybe dashboards up on a wall and that, that data is being, you know, refreshed, you know, in real time to a couple of that, that, is that a leading indicator that there's a probably MES, you know, platform in place that is managing that for them? Yeah, it could be because um, MES, like I said, is data driven. So anything that is giving you data and anything that's showing you, uh, the entire information about a site or their products uh, that definitely could lead you to believe that this site uh, that the site is using MES at some level. Gotcha. Um, and also another factor that uh, could let you know that the site is using MES is uh, the connection between ERP and uh, control system. So many a times there's no direct connection uh, between the ERP and control system. It's uh, again, it's kind of like at a manual level. So someone would physically take a process order form from SAP 
go onto the shop floor physically and hand over that to the operator to tell them that this is the next process order that needs to be started. Mm -hmm. But MES is doing all of that, automating it for you, and also you know, getting rid of any manual errors during that transition. Um, it's just making sure whatever is being sent from SAP or for that matter from, the, from ERP um, is being transferred over uh, to the plant floor without any errors. Gotcha. Cool. Now, there's a lot of listeners out there who may be interested in MES and, and trying to take their career down that path. Where should they start investing time or what should they be studying or following to really get a, a good understanding of, of MES and start working towards that path? To start off with, I think you would need an engineering background uh, because that would just give you the okay. analytical cap capability of how everything works at a shop floor. So anything that, uh, you know, it, it could be manufacturing engineering or it could be information technology. Um, and then to add on to the engineering background, there are many different companies uh, that offer for their uh, that offer certifications for their own MES systems. So okay. taking any of those certifications could also be helpful. Um, and the third thing I would say is um, now MES is a very emerging technology. More and more people are getting to know about it. So I know, um, I, I don't know exactly uh, which colleges, but I do know that some colleges do provide courses uh, in MES. So if you're interested to take that as uh, one of the course in your, uh, in your studies, then then some colleges are definitely offering that. So I would say that they should look up for such courses because that would be part of their curriculum. Right, right. So that was computer engineering, you said, was is, is probably the leading one. And what was the other one? Yeah, so it could be manufacturing engineering or it could be information technology or okay. computer engineering would just give you um, an upper hand in knowing all the technologies. Okay. So... Uh, a good mix of both, like manufacturing and information. That That's what MES is, right? It's a mix of IT plus uh, the operations. I got you. So, yeah. Well, one thing I, I can tell is that you love MES systems. So I'm just curious, what, what do you love so much about them? Um, to say it in one word, um, I would say the ease the that ease. MES systems offer uh, to the site and also uh, the the amount of money a site or a plant or a company for that matter could save uh, using and implementing an MES system. And comparatively, if you see, if you compare uh, with data-driven softwares or uh, cloud-based softwares these days, if you compare the price um, that, that a company has to invest in an MES system, that's pretty low. I mean, a system, a, a company can invest in MES and still get a lot of gains uh, by you know, save, uh, improving their output or improving their overall efficiency. Yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. We call it Eco Ask Why. I'm curious on this one. You got a plant manager sitting in front of you, Mary, and you need to give them the ultimate why behind why should they, you know, start really embracing MES to, to take their business to the next level. What are you going to tell them? MES has a lot of benefits. Uh, so I would like to go point by point uh, explaining what the benefits are. Uh, the first and foremost being uh, better utilization of plant assets. So be it manpower, be it equipment, be it resources, be it inventory, um, managing everything becomes easier with MES because uh, you are reducing human effort, uh, just making life easier for the operators, giving them a workflow of what they want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, then you are improving uh, the life of the equipment because you're going to be doing maintenance as a part of MES. Uh, and then again, because you're using MES, the maintenance would still be accountable for because the, the operators have to follow the exact process for maintaining the equipment every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the second thing. Uh, and then inventory management. So um, when you have a connection with ERP, you are sending a message back to ERP how much uh, how much of how much raw materials have been consumed at the uh, shop floor level. So when ERP knows how much is the consumption rate, uh, they can then uh, 
they can then forecast the quantities that are needed in future and they can order the raw materials well in advance and so that that just keeps the equipment running that just keeps the plant running lesser downtimes and again more uh, efficiency uh, so the third benefit would be getting a good product out uh, so since you are running extensive quality checks on all the all the products that have been produced uh, at the plant level and you are storing all that data and then analyzing the reports in the future uh, you know for sure that whatever product you're getting out there in the market uh, is going to be compatible uh, it's going to be quality checked uh, so that just that just adds to the peace of mind that everything is just working fine the fourth advantage is that you are getting a plant-wide web reporting uh, with MES. So even if you wanted to find out that 10 days before some patch was running and it created some issues and you wanted to track down to the, to the raw materials and then track down to the vendor who's provided the raw materials, you could just go run a report and you could get all, all of those details just in a few seconds. So it provides for a better traceability uh, and then, you know, improving based on that, you can improve uh, your quality in the future. The most, or I would say one of the most important features of MES is reducing downtime. So it costs a lot for the plants to deal with downtime because whenever machine is down, whenever the equipment is down, it also requires enhanced maintenance. Um, and to come up from that downtime, it's sometimes really difficult for the plants uh, and they just end up losing more money. So like I said before, uh, you know, giving an insight into what is going to cause a downtime and then making sure that there are measures put in place so that you can work on, uh, you can work on getting a, a better throughput that would just reduce the overall downtime. So these are one of the many benefits that an MES has. Uh, so I think with these, uh, the manager would be convinced to use MES in their plan. I, th I think you just got the PO. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. So, I mean, <laughs> if the, if the plant manager doesn't jump on one of those five items, um, probably need to move on. So, I mean, it's great, great way to summarize the MES systems and, and the power behind them. Uh, for the listeners out there who, who want to, to learn more or to connect directly with Miri to, to, to get some more of her insight, check out the show notes. You'll find that information right there as well as eTechnologies Group. You'll have, we'll have links there for all that. And thank you so much today for sharing your insight today on this, this wonderful idea, Miri. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks for this opportunity. Um, um, I really had fun sharing all the insights. And yes, definitely, uh, they can reach out to me if anyone needs more information or insights, and I would be happy to help. Awesome. Well, you have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com. -S